On today's Man of the Apes, apparently boomers can just suck it. It's a daily podcast where we break down every minute of the Planet of the Eight movies, one minute at a time, and we welcome our baby boomer listeners to know that that's just Sean's opinion. It's not Richard well, and mine. Yeah, we'll, we'll explain <laughs> that a little bit in between. There's a weird cultural phenomenon going on right now with teenagers and with their their little teenagers. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So really teenagers. Hey, I, hey, I've got a pretty good teenager. She's she's a pretty cool kid. Why, why did the light dip? Why was there lightning? Why did you pull the cape up to your face when you said that? <laughs> Anyway, we'll hit that in, in, in between. All we right. are up it's to... Friday. We're a minute 75. We're a minute 75 on a Friday. Sean, do you want to tell us, what's, All right. <laughs> tell us what's going on? We're going to start minute 75 with Cornelius saying, For the death, and ends with Dixon giving a baby to Zero. All right, let's take a listen to minute 75 of Escape from the Planet of the Apes. For the death of I know, I know, but you will be responsible for a birth. I wish you... Well, the cranes are coming every five minutes now. Every four... <laughs> Well, look, look at Heloise. She's showing an expectant mother what to expect. Mama, Mama, say it, Mama, Mama. Zira, Zira, don't waste your breath and strength. Now you know that the child of two primitive apes will never learn how to speak. I'm getting into practice, Mama. Mama. Yeah, that's good. Come on. All right, at minute 75, we have a planet's worth of humans plus two living apes, a baby ape as of this minute, and no more pregnant ape. A baby ape? A baby ape? Baby ape. Baby ape. All right. So we get into this is our mo- moment when now Dixon, via Cornelius, he understands that Cornelius did not mean to kill Chipper. So Cor- Dixon's finally on board with everybody else that at least knows that he didn't it's mean to. It's an accident. To. At the worst, it's man- ape slaughter or whatever. Yes. Again, all of this seems so wrong even this if this is how he gets it shouldn't stevie have been the one since she got the information from cornelius when they she had the call with dixon that we said should have happened she should have said cornelius didn't mean to do it it was an accident and then he says i know i know just get them here and you and maybe you do that now they all have the information we don't have to say this right, shit once right, they're all together right. and then maybe yeah. you just have one little last bit of cornelius like grabbing stevie's hands and saying please you have to know it's an accident if you talk to them again, let them know that yeah. was, I didn't mean to do it. I, you you're can so re- fragile compared to our strength. You yeah. can reiterate the same information over and over and over and over and over. And it won't get boring if I give it to Richard and Richard gives it to Sean. You know, when you, then we are connected as a group together. Mm-hmm. We've passed information. We've shared. We're working together. But in this gesture, which Cornelius has to constantly be the one going and begging forgiveness, all it does is make him look weak. And, and and what he's doing, there is no weakness inherent to it. But his first thing is to beg that I didn't mean to do it. You know, it it's yeah. that, that, this well, is a drastically wrong choice to have Cornelius be the person. It should be somebody else giving that. Uh, speaking of this idea of Cornelius being weak, we've also lost the strength of Zira, and Zira is uh, the strong one in this birth with everything going on to it. We I mean we get her in the later minutes, but in terms of the setup of the minute, you're talking about Cornelius being weak. 
we really needed zero to kind of stand up a little bit. No, I, I understand that she's pregnant and her right. contractions and I'm not five, but four minutes apart. I, Zira but she just, was she's the she's the strong one. It need, she needed to lead this a little bit you, more. You see, Zira like lean over, put her hand on Cornelius. I know that it was an accident. We all understand it's an accident. And you see her start to crush his shoulder. But I'm having a baby now. Well, suddenly it's an episode of Friends uh-huh. if it does that. But you know, I think that that could have been something like it, you, maybe you don't play the comedy, obviously. But if, even if she went, shh, they know. Mm-hmm. That that would even change this, and it doesn't become these things. And then he looks upon her, and now we have a, a sweet human connection of this. It just, man, it's. It, I Dane is such a good writer for him to have had a sloppy execution of this the way it is. It's just, it it sucks. There, there's a moment where uh, uh, Armando says, "Look at Heloise. She is showing an expectant mother what to expect." And Heloise <laughs> holding the baby <laughs> oh, oh, oh. over, and she's in shadow, and you see her bring the baby forward, and that's and when I'm, you see her milk eye. Uh-huh. Uh, so when you write these scripts, do you think about what you have in terms of the animals and no. what you can possibly do? Uh, uh, like if now modern audiences as a CG, if I had a budget, Mike, well, I'm fucking writing explosions right now. Right. But well, this idea that he had to think about the fact that I had to have somebody an actor, I had to have the baby being shown. If you, it's, it's it's a lot to. I would not have put in a. Look at Heloise showing the baby. Going back now to we a have to establish Heloise. Yes. Okay. Well, going Make back to a point. couple minutes ago uh, with Robert Rodriguez, there's times that you write a script to what you have. He had a tortoise. Absolutely. He had a suitcase. He had a gun. That He wrote a script around it. When you're writing something like this, you're kind of writing pie in the sky and then going, all right, our budget is X. All right, fair, we can do this costume, fair. whatever. But I also think probably they had story sessions before where they at least mapped out what the story is and they said, good, go write it. I mean, that's a in major productions. That's what a director will do. Hey, here's my story. Yeah, but what about this? And that's where you hope the director, who understands narrative thrust, will come in and say, "You got to have this to have that." And I have the feeling they had these discussions. So, yeah, you're 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 gonna probably at this budget just say, "This is the story I want to tell." Can we do it? And that's when they probably said, "You know what? It's going to be a lot easier and probably more economical if we have this guy in the ape costume come in with his." horrible lifeless soul and hold the baby so so for the audience uh cornelius and zero are seated or arrested zero's laying down uh dixon and armando have the conversation in tv dixon walks over to cornelius and says you're going to have the baby your job is to deliver the baby and we see armando and and dr branton come from this side and we point to um Heloise and the ape, and then we come back to Zero resting and Cornelius kind of holding her hand. I mean, there's a choreography to the scene. They still only have two lights because people come in and out of shadows as this moment happens. Um, and we get this awkward moment with this now lifeless Heloise holding a baby ape a chimpanzee up who grabs the the bars. Like I might, I, but he's so cute. I just want to watch him. But again, why not just? Yeah, and I guarantee you that this was shot with a rubber lens, meaning a lens that will move focal lengths. At that point, you don't even have to change your camera setup. Just zoom in on the baby's face. When the baby begins to move, you, you say, hey, can we go get a shot of the baby close moving in? And, and then you get the handler right there going move. And it could, you know, move like that. It's a it's such a mistake composition and shooting wise that they didn't get past this because when i'm sorry i will never unsee that horrendous scary eye that peeks out from beneath heloise's mask it's man they did what they had to do mask were one thing but you know chambers has elevated the makeup that can happen in a film with these the series of films so to go back to somebody just pulling a mask over their face that works in star trek and the guy was in that episode of star trek with the monkey thing in it that works. But here, because Chambers has done what he does, it does not work. So let's talk about this next line. So Zira goes, Mama, Mama, say it, Mama. Um, and Cornelius goes, Zira, don't waste your breath or your strength. You know that a child born of two primitive apes will never learn to speak. So this is foreshadowing potential yes they kind of gave baby it away speaking earlier. right yeah. it mean, is it's a hundred it's so obvious yeah but it would it was a really interesting like hey don't waste your time we're about to have a baby that can speak it, it, but right? i thought that the, the child of two primitive apes was such a harsh thing it should have been you know apes of this era couldn't speak 
anything like that was even it would have lessened that they've not, devo- they've not evolved the logic yet for speech centers we know this we've studied this from history 2000 years ago zero or even he didn't even have to explain that Shh, don't don't just rest. Save your energy. Yeah. Yeah. It should have you'll, been you'll something. You'll be saying mama plenty. Save yeah. Your we, we talk about moments, and even though we have a uh, uh, Giannis in this costume, it would have actually been kind of a nice moment for Zira to have a quiet moment with Heloise mm-hmm. and her baby before we go right into this labor to establish Zira in this shot or in this moment. Right. I would have loved to have seen that kind of her relating to her as a mother. I agree. Before. And I thought that's what she's trying to do. I really do feel like that's what she's trying to do from that bed to that. Mama, mama. Yeah. And, and what else is she, what else is she hoping for? She's being a, a woman. I understand what you, what you've been through. I'm about to have the same thing. It just, I, I understand that. Well, can you imagine that kind of little moment where she's just talking to her, knowing right. that she can't get a response back because she's primitive? Or even, you know, and at that point, if she was close enough and Heloise lovingly stroked her hand or something, you know, just the, a connection between the right. two. And that even kind of is a beautiful visual moment that could have correlated between the two. You know, you're my ancient Showing ancestor. Baby, yeah. And, and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. There are tons of lovely things that could happen. So I was immediately thrown to. I was curious if apes have labor pains and I went and searched Google and Google says they do not. And most animals in the wild do not. And there's a very simple reason that animals do not have labor pains and make audible noises. And that's they because need to hide shit. <laughs> predators can hear it. Predators are already drawn to the smells of birth. And that's why birth is so vulnerable. They will seek them out because not only could they eat the child, but they could eat the mother who's giving it. But in, you know, everything I read, and I, God, I read it ad nauseum. These people were talking about that this one woman said, I have horses and the horse barely made a single neigh. It just simply does it and it goes on. So I know what you were talking about in, in the wow. bike, but uh, giraffes, they give birth standing up. So their babies are Horses born do too, don't five they? five feet to yeah. the ground and then learn how to walk in the next half hour. And so. That, so it made Good me morning. think again. This is hardcore. Uh-huh. So the apes, that's where it really is that these apes, and I think you were the one that alluded to this in the first one, Sean, that they've almost evolved to the point they are not walking like primates anymore. They're uh, truly humans, walking like yeah. humans. Therefore, the, the female probably has had the change in her hip structure that causes the pain that humans have. That's what it talked about is that humans' oh. hips are so vastly different to support the upright nature of which we walk. That's where the pain comes from. So we're, we're going to zero. Uh, so uh, I'm just uh, developed that she is having the same type of thing. Yeah, okay. and it, that's where it was like, okay, you're almost, and I, I doubt that they went to this level of thinking, but now at least it, now yeah. at least I can put together a thing that Oh, they have evolved so much they even have a human skeletal structure right. that causes these issues because their hips are not made for you know because we walk upright and it has to support it. We're not made for yeah, birth I mean, as d- much. I mean, anymore. Dane may not have had like uh, National Geographic on ABC. Maybe not at five p.m. In he the also didn't have Google. Talk about those things, yeah, right. exactly. I just found that really interesting that you know we as screenwriters you have to humanize the foreign concept. You have to take this ape that is meant to be a shocking, it's a talking ape, yet every factor of which she participates within the story, she's a human. And here it is again. She's having labor pains and whatnot. But again, could you would this even be an interesting story as a pregnant character if she wasn't relating to what we understand as the birthing that, process? What it would mean, exactly. Yeah, yeah, she's just laying there and goes, oh, and here's my baby. Hang on. Doesn't, <laughs> doesn't have any drama. And I give you baby. Uh-huh. So speaking of giving her baby, after she has a baby, <laughs> they give her a baby, and that does not look like a newborn baby. Wait, I've never how, seen a wait, newborn how, chimp, wait, but I don't think they look like that. Like I think it's the same chimp. So, by the way, in this minute, Zira goes, "Oh, her face contorts. She gives a deep cry of pain as we shot cut to baby's first cry." So um, we have a baby. This is our Friday. We have a baby. So I tried everything I could to find out about the baby or babies, knowing uh, to your point, it said looks like the same one. And I agree. And I think Wait, that what I found all apes look alike. You bunch of racist. So, so we, we have or a cut. Uh, Cornelius is holding her hand. Mm-hmm. Zero turns her head to the side and boom, we have a baby on it on a table with a blanket being sponge bath very briefly. Um, we have a baby. Zira's just had her baby, guys. Congratulations, Zira and Cornelius. You have a new baby. And Hasline cannot kill your baby right now or make you sterile because you have a baby. 
So let me go behind the scenes of the production, and oh, this gets no, a little they bit can sad. Just murder all three of them now. Yeah, yeah, they can just exterminate them all. So this gets a little bit sad, according That's to what dark, I read. Dude. I, I, I didn't make the movie. I'm not half line. I looked for the baby, what played it. And this is the quote I found from the Planet of the Apes Wikipedia. The young chimp playing baby Milo was probably named Kelly. 